Hello, my name is Zay Bayo. I am a farmer in the interior of Minas Gerai, and I have two friends roughly my age who have been longtime companions. They are also farmers, neighbors to my lands. At one point, when we were facing challenging times in our plantations, the three of us gathered at my farm. It was a dark and silent night, and we were sharing stories around a bonfire when suddenly a strange howl echoed through the forest. The three of us looked at each other nervously, recognizing the sound as something beyond the usual howls of wolves. Curiosity and apprehension led us to explore the origin of that sound. Armed with inflated lanterns, we ventured into the darkness of the night, guided by the sound that led us to an isolated clearing. Suddenly, a grotesque figure emerged from the shadows, a werewolf with bright yellow eyes and sharp claws. The three of us began to fight it, driven by survival instincts, facing the beast with bravery. But it was too fast and powerful. Jose was the first to be injured, his hands were now marked with deep scratches. Coutinho tried to distract the werewolf but ended up being thrown aside, and despite my heroic efforts, I was also attacked. Before the beast could inflict fatal wounds on me, the three of us got up, managed to strike and confine it, silencing the werewolf that was now trapped. We stood there, keeping watch even though we were tired and injured but determined not to let the creature escape. At daybreak, the desperate howl of the werewolf gave way to human moans, and when the sunlight bathed the barn, the creature transformed back into a man. He was naked and wounded. We approached cautiously to examine him. Indeed, it was a man who, minutes before, was a beast. He introduced himself as Samuel, a traveler who had been cursed many years ago by a witch. He shared the tragic story of his curse that transformed him into a werewolf on full moon nights. Samuel was grateful that we had stopped his savage instincts. Despite being injured by that beast, we decided to help Samuel. We sought out a Umbanda house that directed us to a place where the curse could be undone. The people of this place, whose identity I prefer to keep secret, performed a ritual to free Samuel from the curse. At the end of the ceremony, a sense of relief filled Samuel. We returned to our farms, and that beast never returned. Good night. Hello Midnight Reports, I'm Ezra. It's a pleasure to send this story to your channel. In fact the story comes from a friend called Vider, a resident of the Gabriel Farm a few kilometers from the Curie Farm. Beginning of the story. Many years ago, I, Vider, and my family, mother, father, and younger brother, lived on this Curie Farm which was very far from the small town that surrounded other farms. Our house was located in a forested area. It would take a few hours to reach the neighboring city and a few minutes from the nearest house of our neighbor Jew and our Aunt Maria, my father's sister. Near our small farm, there was a strange man who didn't communicate with us 
He lived isolated on his land about 30 minutes from our house. He was a fan of mysticism and used to do a lot of magic work for the gods he believed in, always at midnight. My parents didn't have much contact with him because as my family were evangelical Christians, they had a bad impression about the way of life and practices that the man, whose name we didn't know exactly, used to worship. On a certain Friday night, the day we went to the congregation's Friday service, everyone at home was happy with the service. We talked about many interesting topics. When we finished dinner and got ready to go to bed, my father, as usual, checked the wooden frame on the door to see if it was really closed, and only then did everyone sleep without worry. The only thing that my little brother and I, and especially my mother, didn't like was the fact that my father had to go and sleep at my aunt's house, his sister, because she lived alone and couldn't sleep alone at home. My mother liked to stay at our house. That would be the reason why we didn't go to sleep at my aunt's house with my father. And my aunt also didn't like leaving her house alone when she went on a trip. It's a somewhat complicated situation to understand. So we always slept alone and my father would come back the next morning. The problem was that on that sixth night, the most horrendous and inexplicable event happened at our house just after midnight. When the door closed and the father retired to his aunt's house, I, my little brother and my mother went to sleep doing the same process as my father, closing the bedroom door, and then we finally went to sleep. The night was very cold and for a moment dark. Firstly, I heard some growls outside the house, inside our land. I thought it was dogs that lived on the street, or even our dog Scooby who was always chained. But at night, I left him loose to sort of protect our house. Home, ha 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 ha. However, that night we left him on the chain, tied to the side of the house. Anyway. For a moment, Scooby didn't bark, and the noise continued, now with more intensity. It was at that time that our dog started barking tirelessly, looking like he had seen a ghost or something similar. My mother and brother later woke up to the barking and grunting of what was outside, with all the commotion. At first, it seemed normal because dogs bark at anything especially at night, but that night was totally different. Suddenly, something very strong breaks the chain where Scooby was trapped, scared. Our pet runs away into the woods, very afraid of what was tormenting him that morning. After all that, we were silent wondering what could be in our backyard when suddenly something started scratching the front door of the house, as if it wanted to gain access to our home, it continued to insist, putting force on the door, until in a moment that something manages to loosen the frame, and consequently, the door opens. That thing that we had no idea what it was, came in and was already in our dining room rummaging through the things it found. I couldn't rest until I found anything that would serve you. Meanwhile, my family and I, who were inside the room, were terrified because we couldn't imagine what was happening in our room. For a minute, everything was calm until we heard the sound of water hitting something. A pan or aluminum basin the kind that every person has in rural areas. Right after this whole episode, it was coming towards our room and had actually already reached the door. At that moment, it started to growl as if it was sniffing our smells under the door. 
My mother began to pray and ask God for protection for our lives. I wouldn't know how my father would react to that situation. I don't know why, but that animal gave up trying to invade our room, seeing that it wouldn't find anything useful for it anymore, and left leaving our front door wide open. Without the courage to open the door in that gloomy early morning, we tried to sleep early when the day was beginning to dawn. We left the room and saw everything turned over. The door opened, and then we discovered what that sound of water was. It was an aluminum basin that my mother left filled with water in the living room. As there was no running water on our land, so we stored water in basins and pans for use at night, and this basin was practically empty. That creature had drunk most of the water that was there. Thank God and my mother's prayers, nothing happened to us. My father arrived shortly afterwards, and the explanations about what happened will be next time. Good night.